So there's another type of sleep disorder called parasomnias. Um, so abnormal activity that happens to us when we are sleeping. So things like sleep talking, sleep walking, sexomnia, sleep eating, um, night terrors where we are terrified of something we feel we have seen. We may not even remember it and um, it can be quite sort of exhausting. Um, and, and whilst these kind of conditions seem to be much more rare than say insomnia is, um, I see it quite a bit in clinic and I often wonder whether people see it as a condition um, or even know that it's happening and that's why we don't think it's as common as something like insomnia. The interesting thing about it and what I've known in my experience, so for example, um, I worked on a Channel 4 sleep series called The Secrets of Sleep and we were given about uh, 12 complex cases of sleep disorders, all different, so insomnia, sleep apnea, narcolepsy, parasomnia, so people suffering from something like night terrors or sleepwalking and talking. And I remember a specific lady um, who had really serious sleep uh, night terrors um, and it was really terrifying for her and it was really distressing and happening regularly. And these were all people with all these complex sleep disorders that had already been treated. So they had already gone through diagnosis, sleep studies and treatment and they were still struggling. So it was our job to try to, you know, with all of our experience, um, I was working with Dr. Guy Leschseiner, who has a lot of experience in sleep medicine. Um, and between us, what we were trying to do is use our skills and everything we knew and everything we had been taught and learnt through other patients, how we could sort of adapt a, um, a program that would work for these patients. The interesting thing is we adapted and gave all of them some kind of a personalized program which was very similar to cognitive behavioral therapy for insomnia so what I use to treat my insomnia patients we developed it into something that could help we used elements of it to help with all these other sleep disorders and the interesting thing we found was because CBTI is literally just building the sleep quality and building the sleep duration if needed also alleviating some of those fears, worries, and ideologies around sleep that aren't quite accurate, we found we actually improved their conditions, especially with parasomnias. Also, parasomnias can really be exacerbated by things like poor sleep, by things like excess alcohol or caffeine, or just a stressful time in our lives. I often sort of reflect and look at it when I'm when I'm dealing with somebody that has night terrors, and indeed I've had night terrors in the past. Um, what I sort of see it as now is everybody when they go through some um, uh, life issues, whatever they are, stress doesn't matter what it is, some kind of trigger, they're going to have a sleep issue. But some people are more sort of predisposed to having a night terror over, for example, just poor disrupted sleep that you might look at as insomnia instead. And I just see it as sort of your own way of potentially, you know, uh, you know, your body's way of, you know, showing that problem up. And actually, it does show that when you improve the quick sleep quality and the sleep duration, in most cases, you can also improve and reduce the frequency of these abnormal activities happening at night.